Well, you're watching the KOA Morning News on Fox 14. Right now at 7, neon signs have been making a comeback in the four states. We have an inside look at how these iconic signs are made. Also, we'll hear from both candidates from the Crawford County Sheriff race to learn what they hope to bring into their area if elected. And we've got a great looking day today with temperatures reaching upper 70s. The four states most watched news starts now. Well, good morning and welcome to the KOA Morning News on Fox 14. I'm Elise Snowy and I'm Lindsay Gaffney and it is seven o'clock this Wednesday morning, middle of the week. So, yes, I mean, you can't complain. It's a great, great day. Great day. It's been a great week so far, yes. temperatures wise. I mean, I know it's hot and they're not fall temps, but <laughs> I mean, we'll be missing them in come January, I'm oh, sure. Yeah. So I mean, hopefully I would like to see some cooler temperatures, though. But who am I to complain right. about the weather? <laughs> Well, if you drive through Pittsburgh, if you're wanting to, you know, take in some fall colors, you may notice more and more neon signs popping up. KOEM's Lonnie Walton tracked down one of the companies responsible. He shows how these iconic signs are made. Here at Sign Brothers, we do a little bit of everything, but uh, there's not very many businesses around that do neon, and that is something that we focus on. Josh Young is the graphic manager at Sign Brothers. He says finding a neonist, the person who creates neon lights, may be a little difficult. We have an in-house neon uh, neonist, and he bends the neon right here at Sign Brothers. That's right, meet Chris Laforte, the store's only neonist. He learned the trade from his late father. He says he enjoys making all types of signage. Well, they come, tell, usually tell me what they want, and I can sit down and draw it up. Um, I can paint and draw, and I, I drew that out, drew these out. Now, this is the place where all the production takes place, but watch out. Laforte says it can get a little hot. Well, it gets really hot back here, so we have to sh I have to shut off the fires for a little bit and turn them back on. It's just, it's just the way it is. Frank Caputo from Jim's Steak and Chop House says he changed the signage a little, but keeping its nostalgic value is a must. The sign is, uh, it still had the original uh, neon um, uh, tubes in it, and we had them redone. We had the sign repainted and all the interior wiring redone. Both Young and LaFord say they love their jobs, but they still have to keep a look out for certain things. The hardest part of my job is trying not to get cut or burned. And there's one that really inappropriate sign <laughs> they asked me for, but I don't think you can put that on TV. <laughs> Porty in Pittsburgh, I'm Lonnie Walton, KOAM News. The Young says he can't wait to do more projects throughout the four states keeping the neon nostalgia alive. I have a neon sign. Yes. I think they're so cool. I mean, I don't have it up anymore, sure. but I did during college. They're so it was, fun. It was a crowd pleaser. Everyone loved it. Yeah, so absolutely. Fun. And they can be so personalized too. They it just, can. you know, a little any expensive, color, anything. but they're, they're super, super I fun. love them. Yeah. Fun. But you know what else is fun? Hmm. The fall temperatures. Yes. I mean, Semi-fall Semi fall, yeah. But <laughs> today we're getting up to upper 70s, mm. so looking pretty good. We can go ahead and take a look outside. Looks like a gorgeous sunrise. Temperatures right now in the mid-50s, clear skies, and it's going to be clear all day long. Now, we've got a calm wind out there out in Joplin. That's because a boundary is moving through, so winds aren't really gusting or blowing at all right now, but they will pick up as we head later into the day. Now, throughout the rest of the day, temperatures reaching uh, low 60s by 9 a.m., and then by 6 p.m., we're already dropping back down through the 70s. High of about 79 to 80 degrees today, but sunny again all day long. Now we do have that boundary moving through, but we don't have any clouds, no rain chances, at least not today, but we do have rain chances picking up tomorrow. Pretty slight chances at the start in the morning. Likely those showers are not gonna reach the surface, but as we head into the evening after about 9 p.m., we do have shower chances, isolated shower chances picking up. About 20% chance of those showers along a cold front boundary. So temperatures reaching upper 80s by Thursday. And then Thursday night, that boundary moves in and temperatures drop again for the weekend, having a perfect fall weekend with temperatures in the 70s. But I'll talk about those details coming up. 
A perfect wall, fall weekend sounds really nice. Thanks, Lindsay. A Carthage man pleads guilty for his role in a fatal DWI crash that happened more than two years ago. Joseph Hill was 19 years old at the time of the crash in July 2022. A Joplin police say he was driving under the influence when he overturned near Grand Falls in Joplin. The crash killed 19 year old Keenan Reed and a third person in the vehicle was taken to the hospital. The Joplin Police Department arrested Hill after determining he was intoxicated while driving. Now, prosecutors originally charged Hill with DWI, death of another, assault second degree, and driving while revoked or suspended. Now, as part of the plea deal, the second and third charges were dismissed. Now, Hill's sentencing is scheduled for January. And to be the first to see breaking news, weather, and sports, you can download the KOM News app. It's available free of charge in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. Just search for the KOM News app. Well, the Miners Hall Museum in Franklin, Kansas draws thousands of visitors every year with its showcase of Southeast Kansas mining history. But a federal program will allow the museum to improve its preservation efforts. Now, CAPS, the Collection Assessment for Preservation, is a federal assessment program designed to work with and evaluate museum's preservation efforts. Museum personnel say they welcomed the assistance. How do we take care of it? Is it okay to leave it in that mat? Is there something we need to do better? And uh, these people have a lot of experience in that, and we're going to count on them to point us in the right direction. <laughs> Now, only 71 sites were chosen across the country to receive CAPS assistance. When you head to the polls this November, you'll see a lot of names on your ballot. But we want to help you learn more about the candidates you'll be voting for this time. Those running for Crawford County Sheriff. KOM Samantha Walker sat down with Danny Smith, who is running for re-election, and his opponent, Billy Tomasi, to ask them about what they hope to bring to the position. I've been the sheriff for the last five years. Um, I've been here a total of 29 years. I, I've been here my whole entire career, so I've been serving the citizens of Crawford County half my life, and it's been in one agency. Yeah, I've been in law enforcement a little over 30 years, worked my way up from lieutenant to assistant chief. Um, after a couple of years of all that, Crawford County called and asked me if I'd come work for them. I did, and I became an SRO approximately seven years ago, school resource officer for all the elementary schools. We're going to have crime. And we know a lot of things are, you know, a lot of the crime is revolved around drugs and addiction. And, you know, a lot of times it's mental health issues also. When I worked the road, we did a lot of traffic stuff, a lot of drug interdiction and stuff. We need to bring that back. Um, it's got a little bit laxed, and I believe that we need to get more focused on that. Uh, we need to get focused on helping the people with the mental health issues in our county. Absolutely, if somebody's bringing drugs into our county, in our community, you know what, you're going to be arrested and you're going to have to pay for that if that's, you know, being prosecuted. But there's other people that maybe it's addiction that they're fighting. And so if we can help on that side, we'll do that. We got to get out there and get them both help for the addiction and the mental health. And you got to start. You can't just wait for them to come to you. You got to go to them. I think in the last five years I've shown that uh, I, I can, I'll accept that challenge and, and I, I want to be the one responsible. And so uh, I have no problem doing that. There's a very big responsibility. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I'll have to learn. And like any job you go into, any new job, you're going to have to learn stuff to learn. And I'm really, really willing to take on that. And voters will cast their ballots for Crawford County Sheriff November 5th. You can hear more from both candidates on our website. Of course, that's KOMnewsnow.com. And those are our top news stories this half hour. Coming up next, representatives from the Pittsburgh High School Culinary Dragons join us this morning with an invitation to this year's Trunk or Treat Bash happening this weekend. We'll be right back, but first, here's a live look from Cato, Kansas for Cato Days. The Pittsburgh High School Culinary Dragons are inviting you and your family to a trunk and tree bash happening this Wednesday along with the theater's haunted house. Now we have a chef Anthony Fisher and a Wednesday Rayo are with us this morning to share a little insight on what you can expect when you drop by. Welcome to you, chef and Wednesday. Happy to have you here. Thanks so yeah. much. So for those who might know, talk to me a little bit about the trunk or treat bash happening this weekend. The trunk or treat started as a an idea from a fellow teacher, Coach Walker, 
she wanted to do something to encourage her students mm. to get out into the community and the culinary dragons anybody who's been around pittsburgh knows that we're out in the community a lot yes so for us to support them was just an easy thing to do and i think it's great the more our students are involved with the community inviting them out showing them a good thing to come from the high school yes getting new kids to experience things like that the positive atmosphere that they try to create it's going to be a blast we're going to have music and pictures and lots of fun there and wednesday tell me about your experience prepping for this event and just you know doing more things involving the community and getting to see you know kids all excited dressed up in their halloween costumes i think it just makes me like think back when i was a kid mm -hmm. and like i wish that was around when i was a kid because like um i really looked up to the people that were in the high school yeah. when i was um little and so like it just it made me like really want to do it when I got older and now, now I am. Absolutely. Now you're the role model yeah. for those young kids, which is just fantastic. So talk to me um, when and where this bash is going to be held and also about the theater's haunted house that will also be happening at the same time. Well, the trunk or treat will happen on the south side of the building. Mm -hmm. uh, it, we, it starts at 6. We're going to run until at least 7, okay. maybe a little later. Yes. depends on how many kids show up. We wanna, we'll want to. we be there until people stop showing up. <laughs> and then just show up. If you have a group that wants to take part inside of it with us, uh, show up at 5.30 for setup. And you're more than welcome to come and join us and be a positive influence in our community. Absolutely. Well, thank you both so much for being with us this morning. Happy to have you both. And if you'd like more information, you can visit their Facebook page or call the number at the bottom of your screen. Stick around. We'll be right back. Well, taking a look at downtown Pittsburgh, we've got a great looking sunrise out there, mostly clear skies. Temperatures are a little bit cooler starting off in the upper 40s to low 50s out in Pittsburgh. Now, yesterday our high got up to about 87 degrees, which actually beat out the record that was set back in 1947. So we were well above average for this time of year. Even our lows are about 15 to 20 degrees above what they should be for this time of year. And we're going to go into the winter season even with above average temperatures all the way through December. But today we had a wind shift line that came in through this morning. So temperatures dropped down a little bit, not drastically, but back down to the upper 70s. Now clear sky so there's no clouds or rain along that boundary but we do have winds now out of the north northeast pretty light about five to ten miles per hour and then temperatures starting off in the upper 50s mid to upper 50s today and our highs really only reaching upper 70s especially in the central and northern counties but the further south you go we're going to get into the low 80s but winds are still going to be out of the north northeast through the rest of the afternoon so we've got uh mostly temperatures in the central and northern counties in that upper 70s degree range from about 76 to 79. Now, the further south you go, the warmer it's going to be because the wind shift line didn't come in as early for those southern counties. So about 80 in Neosho, 83 in Anderson, 85 in Jay and Grove, 80 in Independence and Sedan, 79 in Oswego, so not so bad. It is cooler than yesterday, but we're still I mean, nearly 10, 15, even 20 degrees above what we should be for this time of year. Now, winds and, uh, excuse me, winds start to pick up a little bit later on this evening, around 8 to 10 p.m., but temperatures only dropping down to the upper 60s by midnight. Now, even though winds are picking up, it's still going to be mostly clear skies throughout the rest of the day. Now, you can see winds gusting up to 20, 25 miles per hour, 28 miles per hour in Joplin, 26 miles per hour in Miami. Then as we head into Thursday morning, so this is going to be about 930, winds gusting up to 30 miles per hour, and they strengthen even more than that as we head into the later evening hours on Thursday. Now 8 p.m. is just right ahead of that boundary that's going to be moving in. Winds gusting 40 to 45 miles per hour. So tomorrow is going to be a pretty windy day, and especially in the evening, gusting above 45 miles per hour. But there goes that wind shift line in the corner near north of Wichita, and that's going to be moving in, bringing a few showers to our area. So as we head into Thursday, again, clear skies all day today. Temperatures dropping down to mid 50s tomorrow. A few clouds push in and maybe an isolated shower or two, but likely those showers are not reaching the surface. So then we're flashing forward to Thursday evening 
where winds start to shift. There goes that wind shift line. This is about 8 p.m. And then clouds and rain showers start to push in. Now, the main threat for storms is going to be northeast of Kansas City, but we still are at the tail end of that boundary. Likely some showers pushing in and then temperatures drop for the weekend after tomorrow. Again, upper 80s tomorrow is going to be hot. But for the weekend, sunny skies and temperatures in the mid to upper 70s looking really good and we do have more rain chances coming up just ahead of Halloween cooling us off for the holiday. But that's a look at your forecast. We'll be right back. Well, we have a Will Morris from the Kansas State Research and Extension Office. He's joining us in the studio to talk about the 4-H record book. So welcome yes. to you, Will. Thank you so much for being with us. For those who might not know, talk to me about what 4-H record books are. Yeah, so 4-H record books, they're not always our funnest thing, but sure. are they're one of our <laughs> most important mm. things. So, you know, as um, us as adults, we have to track things, whether it be our right. finances, bills, different mm. things like that. So with all of our 4-H projects, you know, record keeping comes in part of that, it, no matter if it is like our livestock projects okay. or maybe some of our indoor projects like our arts and crafts or photography, different things like that, because, you know, everything kind of has and a sure. uh, cost associated to it. Mm. So we want kids to know that and kind of know what they're investing in those projects and what they're getting in return. And another big part of that is goal setting within those projects. So um, with our record keeping mm. every year, it starts off and right now the kids, they just turned in last year's books okay. and they're now um, starting this year's. They are picking what projects, they are setting goals right. for the year. Okay. So, you know, kids can be in a project from seventh all the way through 18. So we want to see a skill and knowledge progression as that happens. So every year they sit down sure. and they set those goals for the year. And so these record books are, are you know, specific for individuals participating mm -hmm. and they're not some club record book. It's yep. individual. Yep. Okay. Yeah, wonderful. exactly. So, um, so they get to, they put all that in there. They track what they do throughout sure. the year, the different activities, things they've done. Um, you know, it encourages them to go out and do some public presentations or um, uh, volunteer here there's Absolutely. all these sort specific aspects to those that kind of contribute to building those skills and developing them not only within that project area but also as a person and the uh, new season for 4-H is in the beginning of this month October mm -hmm. so kids are you know looking at those record books yes. now setting those goals for people who might want to participate in 4-H where can they get more information yeah so they just contact their local extension office and um, they'll help uh, walk them through the process talk about what clubs they may be interested in and what they can do to get signed up absolutely well thank you so much for being with us this morning thank stick you. around we'll be right back the four states most watched news starts now. Welcome back to the KOA Morning News on Fox 14. It's currently 727. I'm Elise Snowy. Well, the McDonald County, Missouri School District rolled into National School Bus Safety Week with a unique and hands on training exercise. Now, the new program, Bus Helpers, empower selected students to assist bus drivers in the case of an emergency. With parental permission and approval from a school personnel, these students received trained on critical emergency procedures, including how to stop the bus, use the radio, and operate the safety equipment on board. Students are selected by the driver himself uh, as responsible students that are willing to um, help with that in case of emergency. So yes, they're hand selected by the drivers. Now, the training is part of the district's ongoing efforts to create a safer environment for all students during transportation. Well, Pittsburgh City Commissioners toured a downtown property that is in the process of getting quite a facelift. Now, Lorenz Hall's development recently purchased the old Audacious Boutique at 2nd and Broadway. Crews are currently working to separate the first floor into four units, accessible through a courtyard, and then add luxury housing on the second floor. Uh, these buildings are really difficult and um, costly to rehabilitate and so it is definitely a passion uh, and really it's great to have collaborators like the Historic Society and other um, entities that can help make these projects possible from a funding standpoint. Now, Lorenz says her development group is partnering with the city for funding reimbursement for a portion of the project. Now, she says they originally planned to pursue a grant alongside the city, but is no longer doing so. 
early in person voting is well underway in Kansas and in some places it began Saturday. Voters cast ballots at the Bicknell Center in Pittsburgh yesterday where a poll worker says turnout was well ahead of what they typically see for early voting. Now early polling locations will change from day to day in various Kansas counties. Just under two weeks remain in the 2024 campaigns and plenty of people are already casting their votes. No excuse absentee voting began yesterday in Missouri. KOM's Melissa Alexis spoke to some early voters in Jasper County. It is the most important election I've ever voted in. Lisa Kafer is one of the people getting a head start on voting in Missouri. It's been weighing heavy on my heart and I wanted to just make that make that happen as quick as I possibly could. Dwayne Frazier is also taking advantage of no excuse early voting because he says he wants to avoid the long lines on election day. I think everybody needs to vote and that's the reason why I'm down here early so I won't have to stand in line. So far in Jasper County, 2,112 people have done a walk-in vote. But October 22nd begins no excuse absentee voting, which will continue through November 4th. Get in your car, come to the courthouse, the courts building in Joplin, uh, takes a few minutes and you're on your way. Jasper County Clerk Charlie Davis wants to remind people that early voting is a secure way to vote. This is the most secure way because number one, we do check your photo ID. Whether people cast their votes early or wait until November 5th, they need to bring an acceptable form of ID including a Missouri driver or non-driver's license, military ID, or a U.S. passport. Reporting in Jasper County, Melissa Alexis, KOAM News. Now, election officials ask that voters do not wear any political attire like hats or buttons at the polling location. And to find more voting information for your area, just scan this QR code. It'll take you to election resources on our website, koamnewsnow.com. You'll be able to find all sorts of election info, including polling places and schedules. And you can even check to see if you're registered to vote. Now let's check in with Lindsay Gaffney for a quick look at the forecast. Well, it's looking pretty good. Taking a look outside Joplin, mid 50s, Pittsburgh, upper 40s. So we started off pretty cool today, but we've got clear skies, a nice little sunrise going on this morning and calm winds because they are now currently shifting from the south out of the north. So we've got a cooler day ahead, though it doesn't last long. Unfortunately, today is looking good, though. Temperatures in the upper 70s, possibly reaching just about 80 degrees in those central counties. Northern counties, upper 70s, and southern counties, low 80s for our high today. But everyone is going to remain mostly sunny. We don't have any clouds or any rain along that boundary that's passing currently. But ahead of uh, some stronger wind gusts and a very warm day tomorrow, we do have more rain chances kicking off along a, another cold front boundary that's moving in late Thursday evening. As you can see, we've got some scattered shower chances and some isolated shower chances Thursday night into early Friday morning. So we're looking pretty good with rain chances in the forecast, and that leads us to have a pretty nice cooler weekend ahead. Sunny skies and temperatures back down into the 70s, but I'll have those details coming up. Well, a fashion and modeling industry giant is now facing charges for sex trafficking. Ex Amber Kami and Fitch CEO Micah Jeffries, his longtime partner and an employee, all arrested this week and accused of exploiting men for years. Fox News correspondent Alexis McAdams has the story. Sexually exploiting vulnerable human beings is a crime. Former Abercrombie & Fitch CEO Mike Jeffries is in custody, arrested in Florida on sex trafficking and interstate prostitution charges. His partner and an employee also behind bars. All three accused of luring young men into sex parties held around the world, sometimes promising those men modeling work. He was using his power, his wealth, and his influence to traffic men for his own sexual pleasure and that of his romantic partner, Matthew Smith. The 16-count indictment unsealed by federal prosecutors in New York alleges the men used fraud and coercion to exploit their victims, reportedly giving them alcohol, muscle relaxers, and drugs during the parties. Many say they were also threatened and forced to sign non-disclosure agreements. They spent millions of dollars on a massive infrastructure to support this operation 
and maintain its secrecy. Prosecutors say Jeffries ran this secret sex trafficking ring for nearly seven years. This indictment involves 15 unnamed men, but the investigation continues and more victims could come forward. To anyone who thinks they can exploit and coerce others by using the so-called casting couch system, this case should serve as a warning. Prepare to trade that couch for a bed in federal prison. Jeffrey's attorney tells Fox News he plans to respond to this indictment in court, not to the media. Reporting in New York, I'm Alexis McAdams, Fox News. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOAM Morning News. Two avid soccer fans are able to hear the game they love for the first time. We'll be right back, but first, here's a live look from Cato, Kansas, ahead of Cato Days. Consumer Watch this morning. Two budget airlines explore new merger options. The Wall Street Journal report says Frontier Airlines is looking into a renewed bid to merge with Spirit Airlines. This comes after a previous failed merger between Spirit and JetBlue that was struck down by the federal judge who said the potential merger would limit competition. Now, Spirit is also in discussion with bondholders over a possible bankruptcy filing. And Target says it's cutting prices again, this time on 2,000 items in both its own brands and name brand products, including food, beverages, essentials, and holiday gifts. Now, Target lowered prices on at least 5,000 products in May, and it said it was on track to lower prices on more than 10,000 items by the end of the holiday season. Well, Ford is warning electric vehicle owners to stop using adapters for Tesla's supercharger network. Ford began offering free adapters for EV owners in February. Now the company is warning it could reduce charging speeds over time or even cause permanent damage to the charge port. Affected customers are urged to make sure their address is updated on Ford's website tomorrow to receive a free replacement adapter starting October 28th. The feds are trying to help Americans feel secure in their online purchases by banning fake ads in cyberspace. Fox News Jared Halpern has more from Washington. We must be clear eyed and vigilant about the threats emerging from emerging technologies. Have you ever bought something online based on a review only to find the product isn't as advertised. It happens to millions of Americans each year, and now the Federal Trade Commission is trying to make it a thing of the past. On Tuesday, an FTC rule came into effect banning the use of fake online reviews. The agency says it's hoping to restore consumer trust in online shopping. Who's training them? What's the source of the data? And until we know those things, it's gonna be very hard for somebody, um, I think, to rely on them. The rule was first announced back in August that essentially criminalizes the sale or purchase of online reviews, targeting fake reviews written by so-called bots, people who don't really exist, and bans reviews created by artificial intelligence, an area where the law has been scrambling to keep up with technology. The FTC has failed to keep pace with dramatic shifts in technology and data-driven business practices. And the FTC says this is just the first step as it revamps its efforts to protect Americans from getting cheated, with lawmakers applauding the move as the best way to promote fair, honest, and competitive online markets. Vulnerable consumers who have been defrauded by scammers deserve an enforcer with a fulsome toolbox to protect them. Under the new rule, the FTC's maximum penalty for publishing a fake review is a fine of $51,000. In Washington, Jared Halpern, Fox News. And those are our top consumer stories. Let's take a look at the market prices before the opening bell.
Well, taking a look downtown Pittsburgh, sunny skies. We've got a great looking sunrise this morning and it is starting off pretty cool in the upper 40s, low 50s. Much cooler than it was yesterday with a high of 87 degrees, which beat out the previous record that was set back in 1947. Our lows are still about 15 degrees above average, above what they should be this time of year. And we're going to remain above average through most of the season. Unfortunately, temperatures aren't dropping down to seasonable temperatures until mid to late December. But we do have a cool down ahead to this week, uh, starting today. Temperatures again starting off uh, by about 7, 8 in the morning in the upper 50s, looking pretty good. And then we're warming up to upper 70s to low 80s. We've got that north northeasterly breeze as those winds have shifted just this morning. So north northern county, excuse me, are a little bit cooler. 76 in Nevada, Stockton and Fort Scott, but the further south you go, the warmer it's going to be because those winds haven't been out of the north for a uh, long enough time to cool down drastically. So temperatures 85 in Grove and Jay, 80 in Neosho, 79 in Monette. Joplin, Oswego, Neotache. So those central counties are a little bit uh, cooler and a bit more above uh, about average. Now by 6 p.m. we're already dropping down into the mid 70s, then getting down to lower 60s by midnight, really only dropping a couple degrees up more than that, but it's going to be clear all night long. Winds do pick up later on this evening though around 10 p.m gusting up to 20 25 miles per hour but they pick up even more in the morning hours on thursday so about 9 9 30 in the morning especially out in the northwestern counties yates center iola gusting up to 30 miles per hour they strengthen even more than that throughout the day by 8 p.m winds gusting 40 to 45 miles per hour just ahead of a wind shift line that's coming in again tomorrow so we had that one the wind shift line this morning, so winds are out of the north, but by later on this evening and into early tomorrow morning, winds are then out of the east, and then we'll continue to shift out of the south as we head into the midday on Thursday. We're starting off in the mid 50s. A few clouds start to push in along with maybe a shower or two, but likely those showers are not reaching the surface. By early afternoon, winds are out of the south, and then we've got another wind shift boundary that's moving in later on in the evening around 8, 9 p.m. There you can see that wind shift line just past Wichita. Clouds start to push in along with a few rain showers, though the bulk of the storms are going to remain mostly east and northeast of Kansas City. So we're not getting like storms, but we are going to get a shower or two as it passes that wind shift line into the early morning hours on Friday. So late after about 9 p.m. on Thursday and into about 2 a.m. on Friday before finally clearing out. But that gives us a great looking weekend temperatures in the 70s and sunny skies where we warm up to the low 80s by Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday, we've got another wind shift line showers most of the day on Wednesday, clearing out by early Thursday morning. Temperatures drop just in time for Halloween down to the lower 70s and it's going to be cloudy but no rain for Halloween night. Now that's a look at your forecast. We'll be right back after this. Well, there are some moments in life we may take for granted, like the excitement you feel being in a crowd at a live event. Now across the pond, two sports fans with hearing loss are experiencing that for the first time. Leah Mishkin has their story from Newcastle, England. When best friends Ryan and David get together, they find it easy to bond over their shared passion, the British soccer team Newcastle United. I just love Newcastle. Ryan's mother helps her son, who's deaf, explain how the team got their family through some tough times. The 28-year-old has had more than 15 surgeries and lots of health complications. So I used to play Monopoly and read all the programs and read all, over the old things to pass the time in hospital. 2002. He saw his first game at six years old, and the love for Newcastle goes back generations. The team just gave him this jersey, which has given him a whole new perspective of the game. It has these vibration pads inside and an electronic brain. Newcastle United and their main sponsor, Sella, are bringing these high-tech shirts to deaf fans like Ryan and David. And I could feel it like in my arms and down the front. The sensation happens during big moments of the game, like when someone scores a goal or when the crowd erupts in cheers. I think you realise very, very early on that we were going to be able to make a massive difference in their lives. I feel like we've got full access to the environment. We feel like we're included. We feel like we're, 
we've got a connection with the other fans. Because they've been fans for, you know, more than a decade. Yeah. And it's the first time they're able to feel it in a different way. It's new, a new experience for them. Yeah, exactly that. David and Ryan say it's an unforgettable feeling they can now experience over and over again. Well, certainly exciting. You know, when you love a sport or you love an event so much, and I can't even imagine not being able to hear that. It goes into so much of the excitement and the thrill and the adrenaline. Yes. So it's great that they get to experience that for the first time. It is really cool. I'm from Mississippi State, so we have a very loud mm. football yeah. event, cowbells. So that would be, I mean, that's, that's amazing. It's half, the, it's half the fun. It is half the fun. <laughs> I think other people who play against us would disagree. Yeah, sure. But... Yeah, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Absolutely. Well, how about that fun for the weekend forecast or the week forecast week or whatever forecast, we're looking week at? Weekend of the weekend. You <laughs> I don't know, even we know what day it is. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of things going on today. It's going to be pretty clear temperatures in the um, upper 70s. Excuse me. We can take a look outside. But um, and then tomorrow already reaching upper 80s. So it's going to mm. be really hot tomorrow. But luckily it doesn't last long because we've got a wind shift line coming in again tomorrow. A couple of clouds couple of showers right. in the evening time and then great. for the weekend sunny skies back to the 70s so it's going to be really awesome this weekend absolutely but that's really about it yeah um at least until halloween and we got more rain coming in then that'll be great but it'll clear out before the festivities start so perfect timing absolutely stick around we're back with the news you need to know right after this well, here's a check of today's top headlines, the news you need to know before you head out the door. Now, Joseph Hill of Carthage pleads guilty for his role in a fatal DWI crash that happened more than two years ago. Joplin police say he was driving under the influence when he overturned near Grand Falls in Joplin. The Joplin Police Department arrested Hill after determining he was intoxicated while driving. Now, as part of the plea deal, the second and third charges were dismissed till sentencing is scheduled for January. The Miners Hall Museum in Franklin, Kansas is seeking help from a federal program that will allow the museum to improve its preservation efforts. The collection assessment for preservation is a federal assessment program designed to work with and evaluate museum's preservation efforts. And the McDonald County, Missouri School District rolled into a National School Bus Safety League with a unique and hands-on training experience. The new program, Bus Helpers, empowers selected students to assist bus drivers in the case of an emergency. These students received training in a combination of areas on bus operations. The training is part of the district's efforts to create a safer environment. Now we've got temperatures today reaching upper 70s, low 80s, sunny skies all day long. Tomorrow, warming up to the upper 80s. It's going to be really hot tomorrow, but we do have another wind shift line coming in late in the evening with a few shower chances. It's going to cool us off for the weekend back down to the 70s. Sunny skies again, warming up to low 80s by next week. And then another wind shift line, a cold front ahead of Halloween. That'll be Wednesday and into early Thursday morning, clearing out for all of the festivities. Now, Friday is going to be November and it's going to be 71 degrees, which yes. I mean, I grew up in part in Minnesota and that is just unheard of. Unbelievable. It's probably already snowing there. It, so. I'm sure it is. I have family um, from Minnesota and sure. every time they would come down to visit us, yeah. um, I would be wrapped up like right. be December. Yeah. I'd be wrapped up in like <laughs> multiple layers and uh, my thick jackets and they're wearing shorts and t-shirts. Right. And I'm like, that's crazy. And well, like, you know, this feels fantastic. Yeah, so it's we like should, 10 we should, below. you know, not take this for granted. Yeah. We should enjoy yeah. it while it's here. Well, leaves and hues of burnt orange and red fell in Hopkinton, Massachusetts, as part of the state hit peak fall color. Now, this footage was filmed in Hopkinton, located 25 miles west of Boston on Tuesday morning. According to fall foliage prediction map, the New England region reached peak fall color in mid late October. Beautiful. I think we're there. I don't, I've been driving around and it's yeah. gorgeous yeah, outside. I there. love seeing all the colors. Looks great. Well, thank you so much for letting us put the good in your morning. We'll be back with more news and weather at noon. Have a great rest of your morning.